So Sudaji, a very, very warm welcome to you from all of us at New Acropolis and the Culture Circle. And it is truly, really an honor to have you with us. Your books are a delight. The work you do in philanthropy is amazing. And today we're going to take, talk about your journey in life okay. and the books and the philanthropy that you had done. So we are New Acropolis, which is a school of philosophy in the classical manner, by which we mean that we study from cultures from all over the world and we extract their principles and then you know Sudadi we try to practice we try to practice what we study and the culture circle as I was telling you earlier is a department within New Acropolis in culture circle we investigate and we celebrate culture from a philosophical point of view which means as a search for truth and for beauty and goodness and for wisdom and we view culture as the legacy of humanity. We, uh, it's, it's like a thread which we pass on from one generation to the next. And uh, with that, I'm going to welcome Sudhaji one more time. So Sudha Murthy was born in 1950, which makes her a beautiful age of 70. Yes, yes Sudhaji, wonderful. In Shigong, in Haveri district in North Karnataka, she completed her engineering from BVB College of Engineering, which she's very proud of. And she has amazing stories to tell about that, where she's the only girl with 149 boys. <laughs> she really set a record there. And not only that, she obtained the first rank in all branches and received a gold medal from the Institute of Engineers. Congratulations, Sudhaji. She did her M.E. from the Indian Institute of Science with distinction, and she started her career as an engineer with Telco, and that's another story, but you can also read in her books. Today, she's the chairperson of the Infosys Foundation and has handled 16 national disasters in the last 24 years. She studied in a Karnataka medium school till the 10th standard and fell in love with the language. Her strong ties to the language and its people led her to establish more than 60,000 libraries in Karnataka. She also strongly believes in creating awareness for social causes and has passionately traveled the world for this purpose, including universities and gatherings in a long list of countries, which I'll read to you, the US, Colombia, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, New Zealand, Australia, England, Thailand, Vietnam, China, Tibet, and Singapore. A prolific writer in English and Canada, her books have been translated into all major Indian languages and have sold over 30 lakh copies around the country. She's a columnist for English and Canada dailies with 30 books and more than 200 titles to her credit, including novels, nonfiction, children books, and more. She has also received nine honorary doctorates. Some of her awards include the R.K. Narayan Award for Literature, the Padma Shri in 2006, at the Mabe Award from the Government of Karnataka for Excellence in Kannada Literature in 2011, the Lifetime Achievement by Crossword Books Book Awards in 2018, and more recently, the Lal Badu Shastri National Award for Excellence in 2020. She lives by the belief that generosity of a few is hope for millions. And with that, Sudhaji, we'll go to our questions. In the foreword of your beautiful book, how I taught my grandmother to read. You describe being brought up in a village and you say how in those days there was no television, there were no CDs, no music systems. And to quote you, you say, the only luxury was books. And you speak about how your grandfather would tell you stories under the twinkling stars, stories from the Katha Sarit Sagara, Arabian Nights, Aesop's Fables and more. My question to you today is, as an author of over 30 books, Sudhaji, what is the great importance of stories in our life? Uh, good evening and thank you for uh, hosting me. It is always nice to and pleasure to talk to people of different, you know, different way of thinking, different background, because it, it makes, it breaks the monotony in life. Actually, there is, uh, there is a saying in, in Rukh Veda, it says, let all noble thoughts come from all direction. Ano bhatrani pashant. It says, let all good, th all thoughts come from all direction. 
to me so that I can improve myself. And this is one of the channel which your new Acropolis is doing. And it is so nearer to our order and sister thought. So it made me to you know, accept this invitation. And thank you very much for hosting me. Thank you so much. And regarding stories, suppose I tell you, you should tell truth. You should work hard. If you go on giving sermon like that, mind gets bored. If you convert that into a story form and send the same message, you will never forget it. Because all human beings, we are used to, we enjoy listening to stories in a different form. And that is the reason I realized that I must write to children instead of giving a big sermon, okay? So stories, telling stories is different and it also helps you a lot, particularly in creative writing. For example, in my case, there was no electricity flow. Our work will start at 7, 6 a.m. in the morning and it will complete by 7 p.m. We'll have dinner at 8 o'clock, we are free. And my grandfather will describe me about, let us say, Bhagavata or something about Lord Vishnu, okay, like Puranas, you know, old mythology. And when he will describe for me the imagination of Krishna, you know, which is given in the text, how, because none of us have seen Krishna, okay? So described Krishna means it describes he had lotus eye, he was dark in uh, complexion, and but he had a very nice face. Shanta Karam, Bhujagashayanam, Padmanabham, Suresham, Vishwadharam, you know, it, it goes on describing him. So I can imagine Lord Vishnu the way I want it. Very tall, very handsome, dark, dark color, all those. So your imagination, you can go up to any level. When I, you know, in 1990, 1990s, we saw Mahabharata serial, we saw Nitish Bharadwaj and Krishna. So when I tell my children, you think of Krishna, they think of Nitish Bharadwaj. <laughs> yeah. Right? So imagination grew much more in storytelling. And I learned the art of putting anything in the form of a story, which is enchanting, easy to understand, and difficult to forget. Wonderful. Wonderful. Exactly. I think stories bring things alive. They give us lessons that we'll never forget that in the most true. beautiful manner. Thank you so yeah. much for all the books you've written and <laughs> sharing your life with us. Mm -hmm. So the next question. Mm -hmm. In the book, The mm -hmm. Day I Stopped Drinking Milk, mm -hmm. you tell us a beautiful story about Rehman's Avva or mother. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You had been invited to his home for some authentic Dharwad food, which comes yeah. from your hometown. Yeah. You were very excited and you accepted that you would love to come to his house for dinner. And he said, and when you went, you observed his mother and sister. And he said to you, I'll read a little excerpt from the book. Ma'am, you must be wondering why my mother and sister are Hindus while I am a Muslim. And he remembers, say, and, he rem and he says that you have helped so many people from all religions and communities without bias. And he remembers your words where you had told him, we cannot choose the community or religion that we are born into. So we should never think that our community is our identity. So Daji, what do you believe is the true identity of a human being? A good characteristic of a human being is to identity, not with money, not, you know, like there's a shloka in Mahabharata. I quote a lot more Sanskrit and uh, Mahabharata, etc because I've been brought up in that atmosphere. Why Krishna was respected? Is he because he was the son of Devaki or Ashoda and Ashoda? Is he Krishna was the son of Vasudeva? Is he because he was the husband of beautiful Rukmini? Is he because he was the son of Aniruddha, the most handsome man? Why? They say none of them are true. Krishna, so I am Krishna. What you are are what you are. It is not that you are somebody's wife or husband. It is not because you are daughter or mother of someone. It is not because what money you own, actually. Outside world it may be, but inside what you are is defined by the way you behave with people who have less privilege than you. Not who have more privilege than you. Then you are very nice to them anyway. People, when they are in difficulties and they are less privileged, how you deal with them, that shows what you are. And I always believe that that is what 
you know, probably the God or whatever whomsoever you believe has made you to be a good human being is the most important than what religion you are born. When you are born, you have to be born in one or other religion, no? One or other family, no? You can't be born in, in a... Uh, uh, in a stable, you can't be born somewhere. You are born in one family, so you belong to some religion. And depending on that, you'll have the same name. You'll be, you are you are brought up in that atmosphere, but inside, you should be a good human being. I always tell my children, what position you achieve is not important to me, but remain good human being. That means hard working, telling the truth, honesty, and compassionate. These are the qualities of a good human being. You know, I will tell you a very funny thing about this. As a child, I was extremely fascinated by Iran, today's Iran, or Persia in older days. Because, my, you know, there's a reason for that. My grandfather was a school teacher and a history teacher. So he used to talk a lot about Persia and how the language developed, how the Kharosti, there are the there is a language, there is a script known as Kharoshti in Persia. It was 2,500 years back, how it was developed. So you tell me intricacies of many countries, but Persia remained in my mind than any other country. And you know, I wanted to go because there is a first fundamental human rights issue came in, in Persia than any other country. And it was done, it was written there by Cyrus the Great. In this tomb, he says, all human beings are equal. And such a great words, 3,000 to 2,500 years back, someone writes, that means, look at his thinking. Let him belong to any country, any religion, any worshiping thing, any tribe, it is not that. This was very fascinating to me. A man can think in 2,500 years back that all human beings are equal. First, he, he talks about this with respect to uh, Yehudi or uh, Jews. He said they should be made free because, you know, which was not true in the olden days. He says no, because human beings are equal. And I insisted that you know, when I was in Siraz, I will go and see the Cyrus the Great's tomb because I want to pay respect to a person who can think so big in, in olden days, okay? where there was no internet, there was not much reading, there was, other than battles and victory, there was not much there. But his mind was so well developed. Wonderful. And this is what I call a human quality and which I appreciate because first you should be a good human being. You know, there's a difference between an animal and a human being is we can express, we can think, we can walk on two legs, we can shed tears, Okay, we can also talk good things through our tongue, which animals cannot do. And if we cannot do, we are like any other animal. Yes, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I think you have what you said about being a good human being is our identity. Truth and honesty and compassion. Yes, thank you. Sudaji, it is clear from your books what a keen observer you are. You know, you, 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 you have a rich and wonderful, varied life, varied experiences filled with interesting people, incidents. I think the, the amazing quality that you have is you not only remember those incidents, but you have the ability to extract the lesson from that incident. You know, uh, you, 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 you see a person, you remember the interaction and you tell us in almost one line in each of your stories, the essence of that interaction. And you speak in a very clear and simple way, which I, we, I think is really something as philosophers, we always try to achieve. Speak simply, speak clearly, have few firm ideas. In the day I stopped drinking milk, you write the story of a lady called Ganga very touching story, very beautiful story. She's a very poor lady. She has no purpose in life. And one day she starts giving a simple bucket of water to an old man to have a bath. And slowly, slowly, in the whole drought prone village, she starts giving water to bathe to hundreds of people. And she told you something that I'm going to read again from your book. One doesn't need money to help people. 
This is what she said. So our question to you, Sudhaji, is what really do you need in order to help another human being? And also, what led you to start the Infosys Foundation? The first answer is you should love the fellow human being. That is very important because the Latin word philanthropy means love for fellow human being. Yes. yes. So you should love the fellow human being and particularly when they are in difficulties. And you should say, look, uh, I can help in whatever way I want. It's a, it's a mindset or an attitude helping others. It is nothing to do with money. With money, you can do it better. Hmm. You can reach larger public. Like, like with my personal money at Infosys Foundation in COVID time, we spent 150 crore rupees. Okay. So we, we went out of the way. We made 100,000 ration kits, etc. With money, you can touch larger people, large number of people. But if you do not have uh, compassion, you do not love fellow human being, then you don't even distribute one kit. Mm -hmm. So to help others, you require a compassionate nature. And it is not taught in college. It is not taught by book. It is not taught anywhere else. It is taught at home, particularly elders, how they behave with their servants with poor people, you observe as a child. I always say when you are a writer, your mind should be like a blotting paper. When the ink falls, you take a blotting paper or a chalk piece and you roll on it. It absorbs completely. So as a writer, you should be sensitive enough whenever you go, you should absorb everybody's, every situation completely and then you can come back and write. Again, somebody asked me, Sudha, why all these interesting things happen to you and why does it happen to us? <laughs> I said, no, it happens to everybody. Please remember, it, has, it happens to you, it happens to Seema, it has happened to Nisha, everyone. But we don't observe and write it. Yeah. We said, okay, but you, know, you may tell it happened to me and you forget about it. Whereas I write, that is the only difference. Because such things happen to everyone. Everyone, if you have a keen observation, and you want to write it down, then it is possible to write and make a book. Wonderful. This is one part. Second, why I started Infosys Foundation. It was in the year 1995 or 96 time. My daughter was 15 years old and I was 30 years, 45 years old. So she used, by, by herself, Akshata, her name is Akshata, she used to read for a blind person by the name Anand Sharma. She was a reader in a blind school on her own. And one day she came back and told me he got admission in a St. Stephen's College, New Delhi. I said, he should go. She said, Amma is a poor boy. He can't afford, why can't you sponsor? I was head of the Department of Computer Science in Bangalore University. I was extremely busy in setting the question papers. So I just casually told her, oh, Akshata, you can do that. She told me, Amma, I'm 15 years old, the press writes how much money we have, but you don't even give 10 rupees to us. I never gave um, pocket money to my children. I said, no, what you want? Give me the list, I'll get you. Or if I give money, I want the hishob or I want details about how you have spent. So I, Akshata says, you don't give any money. And how can I sponsor? I was extremely busy going to a meeting. She told me, Amma, you are 45 years old. You, you, you are well-educated, well-traveled lady. You have good money. And what is the aim in your life? Is it glamour, glory, traveling, club, lot of uh, ornament? What exactly you look forward in life? And Amma, if you don't do any social work in life, then you don't have a right to tell anyone because you have all the ingredients, but you are not, you are not thinking about it. I went to the meeting, meeting was late and I went on thinking about what Akshita told me. I agreed first 25 years, I excelled myself in engineering education, which you have seen how to beat boys, if you're at that. Yes. Okay. I, you know, I, 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 I did exceed, exceedingly well. Next 20 years, I worked for Infosys with Narayan Murthy to build that company and to look after children. Now, my company and my children have grown up now. Next year, next few years, if God gives me help, then what do I look forward in life? It took eight days for me. I went on pondering on that question, pondering on that what I'm going to do next remaining years of my life. 
then I remembered many things which my grandparents used to do, many things which my parents used to do. It came back to me. I said, no, I will start a foundation. At dusk, I started a foundation in 1996. Now it's 25 years old. Wonderful. That's a beautiful story. In, in, in our family, I think youngsters teach elders. Yeah. My daughter became my guru. I told Akshata, I was sleeping and he woke me up. Oh, that's wonderful. And you taught your grandmother to read yes. as well, didn't you? Yeah. So I think we go from bottom to top. I think. <laughs> that's an amazing story, Sudhaji. Your grandmother, yeah. I believe, she touched your feet. She said, Tell us that. Uh, yeah. My grandmother was extremely bright, but never went to school. She had 10 children in olden days, you know, used to have, and many of them she lost, and she had 13 grandchildren. She was a very good lady, but she could not read and write. I used to read for her every week when magazine used to come. And we were in a village, so the newspaper will come in the evening. Magazine which weekly will come after eight days. So I used to read a, a particular uh, paper serial known as Kashi Yatre. An old woman wanted to go to Benares. My grandmother always thought of going to Benares. You know? And she was not able to go because of the practical difficulties, etc. So one, one uh, Wednesday, it used to come on Wednesday, and one uh, Monday, I went to a wedding of my cousin's, uh, uh, cousin's daughter or somebody's uh, uh, wedding in another village. And I told her, I'll come back on Tuesday evening. But you know, in, now what I'm talking is almost uh, uh, 60 years back story, okay? <laughs> 58 years back story. So, and there was no phone, no telephone, no, and there is no, nothing like, you know, the regular bus. And I also did not bother a lot of cousins I, we had, and we had a good fun in the village. I came on a Friday or something. My grandmother cried. She told me, the magazine came. I wanted to read. I could not read. I touched my fingers. I placed my palm on the book. I wish my palm can read, and they can't read. I knew. She decided she was 62 years old. I was 12 years old. She was 50 years older than me. She told me, will you help me? I said, what? I want to learn alphabets and learn reading. I said, I used to call her Awa. In the Kannada language, Awa means mother. I was brought up by her, so I used to call her Muhammad, mother only. I used to call my mother a sister and call her as a mother. <laughs> so I told Awa, you are old. Look at your hair, they are gray. Look at your skin. Okay, it's wrinkled. You want to go to school? She said, no, I'm not going to school. You are going to teach me at home. I said, will you learn? She said, of course, I'll work hard. Then I became her teacher. And you know, imagine a 12 years girl gets a teacher's job. I was quite hard on my student. <laughs> I will tell her, read these many things. Write 20 times. Recite 50 times. Poor one, you know. And she will do everything. And within three months, she learned. Because whenever she will get time, she start writing. She started reading. And Dashara, in Dashara festival, we have one day Saraswati Puja. You say it's a thanksgiving to goddess of learning. Goddess of learning, you know, we have to thank her one day. So uh, Ova called me and said, today is Saraswati day and you come. And she put a stool, I was very happy. She brought a dress material, I was super happy. Uh -huh. She gave me. And unusually, she touched my feet. I was so scared because no day elders touch youngsters' feet. It is not correct. I said, oh, what are you doing? She said, I'm not touching your feet as my granddaughter, which is not allowed. I'm touching the feet of a teacher because in the hierarchy of Upanishad, a mother is very sacred and important. Father is sacred and important. And the teacher is sacred and important. Teacher is the one who takes from Adnyana, that means darkness or no knowledge, to a good knowledge or paripurna, okay? You are a teacher who opened the door for me to read. You have opened me, you, you have given me wings to fly. You have, you have made me independent person and such person I should respect. Suddenly I counter reacted and touched her feet and nullified, squared it. And I gave her, by the time the book came in the market, Kashi Yatre, I gave the book. Immediately she read Kashi Asai by Triveni and the publisher's name. I said, oh, uh, you got a first class mark. <laughs> she taught me in life. She told me, beta, learning age no bar. And when I became 60, I was thinking when I was 60, what I should do? 
I don't celebrate anything because I think life itself is a celebration. You don't have to celebrate your birthday. You are not uh, like, you know, Socrates, you are not Rama, you are not Krishna, you are not Cyrus the Great to celebrate your life. You are an ordinary person. Thousands of billions of people like us are born and gone. I don't celebrate. I said, if I would not have done my engineering, what I would have done? Probably I would have pursued history a lot. Because even now, I have a history teacher who comes and teaches me. Since six, since so many years, I have a teacher. So I know the culture of the entire world, entire country. When I go, I study and go. I go to any country, I take three months to study and go. Because I enjoy every monument there. Maybe a Cuba, maybe an Iceland, maybe, uh, you know, Kyrgyzstan. Many countries have gone like that. Unknown countries. But I have enjoyed every monument. Uh, yeah, because I like history a lot. I'm a daughter, granddaughter of a school teacher. Yes, you are. At 60th year, I said, what I would have done if I would not have done engineering? I would have allowed to pursue, you know, Indology. So at mm -hmm. 60th year, I enrolled my name in a diploma in Indology. And I was the oldest student in the class. Everybody used to laugh at me. Youngsters, I used to sit with them. Then I remember my grandmother, Awa. Krishna was her name. I said, no, for learning age no more. And I did exceedingly well because I had an aim I should do well and enjoy it. I, I will never forget my grandmother. She taught me the greatest lesson that for learning age is not a bar. The day you stop learning, you become old. And to in order to show my gratitude towards her, I have named my granddaughter as a Krishna. Oh, that's a beautiful story, <laughs> Suraji. Thank you so much. Thank beautiful. You, thank you. Now there are there are a few more questions. Um, no let's problem. see. I know you want to speak of one. I'm going to save it for a little later. Mm -hmm. uh, we will go to your book, Three Thousand Stitches, which is maybe one of your favorites. I think yes, yes, I'm not wrong, yes, and yes. mine too. Certainly, beautiful book. And in the story, Three Thousand Stitches. You speak of the best gift you ever got. Yes. <laughs> Do tell us about it. I will tell you. Though I have written many books, over a period of time while writing, I went on changing my style. And I think by the time I came to 3000 Stitches, it's quite a well-knit and well-tight-knit book, I feel that way. Yes. When I started Infosys Foundation in the year 1996, I did not know which area I should work because my background was a software engineering. But I wanted to help people. And, you know, when I was a child, you know, you, if possible, you please read Red Rice Granary. I don't know which book I've written. All of you should not mistake that I'm promoting my books, <laughs> but I'm telling my experience. I'm telling you in one of my books, it is there, Red Rice Granary. I learned philanthropy through my grandparents, you know. So, I have seen this Devadasi. Once upon a time, Devadasi means the temple dancers who would find arts people who would exhibit their art in, in front of Lord. And over a period of time, you know, uh, when things changed, they became, their name may be Devadasi, but they, will be, they became sex workers. Their children have to become sex workers, that kind. I knew about them and I decided to rehabilitate them. So first time, you know, in those days, I was also young. I used to wear a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. I had a bobbed hair. So first time I went to their place and I told them, look, I've come here and I would like to help you. That time AIDS was in real rage. You know? So I told AIDS in the rage and all. They got so upset with me. And they said, you go back. We don't want to talk to you because I was talking about disease, etc." Yeah. And I did not go there through chapel sent me. You go back. And I felt very bad and came back. And I cried. Second, so after three weeks, I went back again to, you know, cajole them, to talk to them. Again, I went and they thought I would write their story and make money on them. This time they threw rotten tomatoes because it's a tomato season of them. I came back and I sat and cried. And I, I cried. I said, I can sit at home. I can enjoy every day, see a TV. And I'm a movie buff. Every day I see almost one movie and I, I, I you know, I'm, I enjoy reading books. I can spend my entire life like that. And I want to do some social work and look at that, how people are treating me. My dad was a doctor and a professor. 
and a very smart person. He came and told me. I'm sure every daughter thinks about her husband. Father is smarter than her husband. Okay. <laughs> Uh, every daughter thinks that my dad was great, you know. Okay, my daughter thinks about her dad, and I think of my dad the same way. Uh, so my dad was a smart man, and he said, "What happened?" I told the whole story. He said, "You got a promotion, chappal to rope, daughter to be be happy." I said, uh, "I used to call him as Kaka." Okay, I said, "Kaka, come on, what is this?" He said, "Suda, beta, have you seen yourself?" In the mirror, I said I don't see mirror. Actually, as a rule, I don't see mirror at all. I don't require to see mirror. You know, I am not Miss India, and <laughs> I'm not Aishwarya. I am a very ordinary person. There is nothing to look at myself in the mirror two times a day, and I know how to put a bit about the my nose this way. So it goes on. I said no, I don't. I don't see. He said, look, when somebody looks at you with a bobbed hair, and you know, I always believed one need not show their marital status, and one need not show their money also in public. You know, you don't have to show all, the, and your caste. I never believe in that. You have to show your community, your religion, uh, or your marital status, your money. All those things you need not show anyway. Okay. He said, "You don't wear a mangal sutra. You have a bobbed hair. You go in a jeans and t-shirt, and you are talking to the lowest state of the society, and talking about all these things. They can't relate to you. If you want to be related." You should. They should accept you. He said, "You wear a sari, okay? Put a mangal sutra. All those things." I said, "No, I don't believe. These are my fundamental principles." He said, "What is your aim in life? Ultimately, you want to rehabilitate them. In that case, okay, if you want to change, you have to change your dress. Though I don't believe in it, but there is no other go. So I bought a silver mangal sutra, tied my hair, wore a sari, and then I took my father, who was old, because. It's good to take someone like the him. Then we talk to him, and then my father talked to them, you know, about I want to help. But there's a big story. I think in that book I have written a yes. lot more in detail. Yes. Yes. Ultimately, my father introduced me. I'm a school teacher, okay. And I told my dad, you know, I speak by I'm bilingual in Marathi and Kannada. I told my dad in Marathi, how can it be? I said you're a college professor, but doesn't matter. You tell them a school teacher is more convenient. You know, convincing, hmm. and they called me as Akka. Akka means a sister in Marathi and in Kannada. I became friendly with them. Then I started working with them. It took eighteen long years for me to work, and I had a great friend by the name Abhay Kumar who came from Delhi and who started, who joined that because I don't want to tell all the details. There is no time. He joined with me and we worked, and I got a lot of the pimps. They will break my knee, all those things. I got a police protection. Ultimately. when my father died by heart attack i could rehabilitate seven people to the normal life my dad told me in you, in my in your life you can rehabilitate 10 people i will die as a happy man because i gave birth to a daughter who could change such people to real life it is very hard the success rate was single digit it was extremely frustrating many times i felt i can't do it but i continue to do it after 18 years 3000 of them changed Wonderful. And when three thousand of them changed, they wanted to thank me, and they arranged a meeting. And when I went for a meeting, they said Akka gave me gave us so much in life, affection, confidence, rehabilitation, bank guarantee. I stood as a bank guarantor to them. And you know, everybody said they, even the manager said they will cheat you. You know, a three crore bank guarantee was there. I said no. I told Narayan Murthy one funny thing: Murthy, your wife buy the necklace of three crore. He said, is it? Then suppose she goes to a wedding and she loses. What is your reaction? He said, number one, my wife is a Kulkarni. Will never buy a three crore necklace. Yeah. Second thing, she buys three crore necklace. She will never lose. Okay, so it's it is all empirical thing. What you are talking? What do you want? I said, I am standing a bank guarantee for these people. He said, you stand. Why you have to tell all these things? So I and the bank manager told me, ma'am, you are making a mistake. You are you will ruin your money. I said. i'm ready for that but my life has taught me poor people don't cheat probably rich people like to cheat more they never cheated me they never and they are a real good human being mm. you ask me what is human being they are good human being and they wanted to thank me and they came on the stage and they told me akka we want to give you a gift and by the time they know about infosys etc mm. we don't know what kind of a gift we can give this is the bed sheet or the quilt we have made for you each one of us have put one stitch so there are 3000 stitches this quilt will 
to be warm in winter and to be cool in summer. And when you use it, we are always with you. And that is I call it the 3000 stitch, the best gift in my life. It's so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that story. And I've sent you one. <laughs> I will accept it on behalf of the school. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. In fact, Sudhaji, I have the book in front of me. And yeah. I really recommend everyone to read it. And I'm going to read something that you said that day, um, which I think is really worth sharing. You stood on the stage, your, you said your mind went blank because you were overwhelmed by all the love and you didn't know what to say for some time. And then you said this, a Sanskrit shlok your grandfather taught you when you were six years old. Oh God, I don't need a kingdom, nor do I desire to be an emperor. I don't want rebirth or the golden vessels or heaven. I don't need anything from you. Oh Lord, if you want to give me something, then give me a soft heart and hard hands so I can wipe the tears of others. Original. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask if there are any questions that um, you would like to ask. So Daji, I met you 15 years ago at a wedding in Hyderabad and you told me that you don't buy any jewelry nor do you buy any saris and uh, you always wear uh, things that are gifted to you and I met you at that wedding and that something really inspired me to a great extent and I never bought a piece of jewelry after that. <laughs> my God, I'm really, really touched. <laughs> and you I'm changed really my life forever. <laughs> I, I'm really, really, Penny is my dear dead soul. Okay, good. I want to ask you, Sudhaji, once again, what inspired you to do this? My grandmother and my, gra my grandparents wanted to go to Kashi or Banaras, have a dip in Ganga and Darshan of Vishwanath. That is the pious old people normally desire. In their life, they could not make it because they could not travel that much distance and there were no flights in those days to Banaras. Mm. So, when uh, she will tell a lot of things about Banaras religious people. And when I grew up, I did not believe all those things, you know. Uh, however, Banaras played an important role in my life because I read Diana X book on Banaras. And I also met her, uh, you know. So Banaras is uh, India, one of the oldest cities. Historically, I love Banaras. Then religiously. It is historically, it is 5,000 years old. And there are so many documents on Banaras by when at 629 AD and it is quoted many times in different places how Banaras is the seat of learning, seat of music and seat of Indian culture. So I decided to go in 1995, almost 25 years back. I went to Banaras, then I never had an, any idea, you know, the river was dirty, I said no, I will not take bath, I will not take bath, I rather take in the room only, my friend's house I stayed. Then I'm extremely, I was very fond of color combination of nature. I love nature. And I always say when you have saris, the sari which reflects nature or the clothes which reflect nature are always beautiful. Like, like I will tell you, a when a mango flower blooms, you get a reddish, yellowish reddish kind of color. And if you have a sari of that color, reddish, yellowish color, you should wear a red blouse so that it reflects a mango flower. Mm -hmm. Similarly, a jasmine, you know, which has vast green and little a jasmine uh, shrub, you see, a vast green and little white butta on that. That is a white banara. That's a green banara sari, according to me. Lovely. Similarly, when I see a angur, anjur, anjur, when I see, I always feel, it's, you know, when you cut it, that combination of angur with the green leaf is best mixed and match sari color. I, and I, when I look at blue sky blue with the light blue with the, uh, with the mega shama, that is a dark blue together, makes a beautiful combination of that blouse and sky blue sari. This is my way of looking at nature and buying sari. And my friends used to enjoy giving my commentary. So anybody is getting married, they say, no, call Sudha. She will give a commentary and buy the sari. <laughs> so that was my hobby. So when I went, I stayed at my friend's house, he was in a guy hut. 
and he told me Ganga is not dirty in Gaihat, why can't you have a dip? Suddenly I remembered my grandparents. I said, yeah, if Awa would have been alive, you know the river would have been dirty, she would have had a dip. That strong feeling of Ganga. And then I remembered my grandfather also taught me uh, Jagannath Kavit Ganga Uttarana, how Ganga came to earth. So I went there and I took the first dip. The, the procedure is, traditional procedure is, when you go to Kashi and take a drip, you should leave something which is very dear to you. So first dip I took and took water in my hand, like Arghya we call, gave it to the river Ganga and said, oh, this is a traditional way of saying thank you to Ganga, the great mighty river of India. I said, oh Ganga, I thank you. You, this water is for our country, India, where I am extremely lucky to be born with so much of different varieties of language, culture, religion, uh, uh, and many things, music, dance. It is one of the, it is not a country, it's a continent. I'm very grateful I'm born here. So this Argya goes to you. Then I took second Argya, I gave it to Ganga herself. Oh Gange, you are Ado Ado Gange. I recited a shloka on Ganga. You are born in Himalayas, but you have made entire country proud by Ganga Emuna Delta which is the seat of learning, and that is to you. And then I remembered my grandparents. Suddenly, if Awa would have been allowed, alive, she would have given Argya to Ganga and left something there. So I took water in my hand, third Argya, and the last Argya, I said, as long as I live, okay? Son, you are a witness. You have to always give a witness when you make give Argya. Son, you are a witness. This water I'm giving to Ganga, what I love, most is shopping in life <laughs> unless it is really needed like medicine travel music books other than that i will not buy anything for myself and this is a promise i give it to oh ganga and i left i left and you know i wrapped the towel i came on the cds and i sat there i said what did i do yeah in a more emotional way did i give did i not think properly i never planned it it was never a plan planned made decision on this spur of the moment. Then I said, oh, I know. For every rule, you know, there's always a loophole. There's always a bylaw. I can do something. But, you know, after, you know, I dried my hair, changed my dress. I said, no. Ganga, son of the witness I have told. And on the behalf of my grandparents, I put this water. I said, no, I'll stick to this. Initially, I felt how, previous day only I went to market and saw many Banaras saris and came back. How many I should buy? A few to my friends, few to my sisters, etc. I said, how will I do that? I said, no, it's okay. What saris I have, you know, if I use it properly, that's enough. You know, 30, 40 saris, that's more than enough for my life. It is not, then I realized, it is not the necessity, it's the greed of mind which makes us to buy, not the necessity makes us. And it was the greatest lesson to me in life how to get detached. Mm. What you love the most, you can get detached. If only if you make up your mind. Mm -hmm. And believe me, I never go to the market. I never bought anything. And my daughter's marriage and my, do my, my son's marriage, I told respect to daughter and my daughter-in-law, you buy anything, put the bill on my name, I will give. But don't call me for shopping. <laughs> That's the last thing I like. I dislike shopping. I don't dislike to go to shop. Sometimes say, friends insist, but my mind is not there. My heart is not there. It has happened 25 years back. Now I'm used to this way of life. That's an amazing story. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alka, for asking. Namaskaram. Uh, I would like to ask you and actually try to understand that uh, what are the values and principles uh, that one keeps in mind or, are, or follows uh, as a philanthropist? Well, everybody has a different way. This is, this is not the only way. What I have kept, I can tell. I don't know about others. Yes. yes. I really do not care what people talk about me. People talk. talk good things about me or bad things. It doesn't matter to me. Because I know myself very well inside. People can see okay. people who get money from oh. me. They say, oh, Sudha Murthy is very good. People who don't get money from me, they say she's very bad. <laughs> people <laughs> talk depending on their way of looking at me. But what okay. I am inside, only I know. And that's the reason when people talk anything about me, it doesn't affect that. The first thing. Second thing is when I help people in my work, I never, over a period of time, I've learned 
I don't expect anything in return. On the contrary, some people also, sorry, some people blame me, but it, or talk ill of me, it doesn't matter because I want to help and that is the reason I help. On the contrary, I thank them. They gave me an opportunity to help. Third thing, I always say, there is a way to live. For example, everybody has their way to live. I don't comment on others' way, to, way of living. My way of living, I will tell you. You are born, at least in my case, I think, I was born in a most educated family. My grand, you know, my I come from a teacher's family. We are not from rich family. I'm not, not from a rich family. I'm from middle class family. I got good value system, important, you know, respecting elders, respecting teachers, gratitude, helping others, be honest, and work passionately. Work passionately. Yes. Not for money or fame. You follow the passion, the rest comes with you or may not come with you. I married to a man who was like me only, without money. On the contrary, in my marriage, Narayan Murthy was unemployed. Okay? We never aim to make a lot of money in life. We work passionately. We work for, you know, for, for our joy. Money came as a, what you call like a jackpot. Like in a race, you get a jackpot. The money was a jackpot too. Why God gave me money? I always used to wonder. Why this money was given to me? There are many people who are smarter than us, who are more, they, they work harder than us, who, who are better off, in, in more intelligent than us. But why I got it? I always felt it is a signal God has given me. Look, you are an honest person. This money is not yours. You are only a treasurer of the money and this money should go back to the society. And this lesson I got in House of Tata with JRD told me, when you become, when you earn a lot of money, please remember the money should go back to the society. So these are my simple values and I enjoy without comparing with anybody. Beautiful. I never compare myself with anybody because every flower is beautiful in its own way. Hibiscus is beautiful. Jasmine is beautiful. Uh, Parijata is beautiful. Shafali is beautiful. Everything is beautiful. You can't replace one to another. So it's one's life. Thank you, Sudha Ji. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Uh, we have only we have so many questions on the chat box. I have never been seeing so many questions and some beautiful ones that we don't have too much time. What we can do, Sudha Ji, is talk about something that you just wrote <laughs> and that just came out yesterday and that you requested to speak of, which is your dog, Gopi. Gopi is not a, just a dog. Yes. He's actually Dilka Tukra. Okay. <laughs> I tell him so much, you know. See, in COVID time, you know, my, you know, we never went out of the house. My husband is 74 and, you know, I'm 70 and he's diabetes. So it was risky for us to go out of the, our house. So we stayed at home. When you are at home and particularly I'm such a person, I used to travel 20, 22 days in a month and suddenly I'm, I'm at home. I, I still ran Infosys Foundation through my house only. I did everything. But you always like to meet people, touch, hug. You know, many times when people are in difficulties, a small hug and smile is more than enough, okay? Or if somebody passes away, I go at that time, I just hold their hand. I'm sure all of us do that. That touch makes a difference, okay? If somebody is in difficulty, you can say, these two shall pass. A word, a compassionate word will be more than enough. But in, in, in uh, pandemic time, I could not do that. So my gopi was so much attached to me, I hug Gopi and tell Gopi, look, this happened today. I will talk to him as if I'm talking to my child. And I tell him bedtime stories, Gopi. One day Gopi was traveling. I was telling Gopi, you know, one day Gopi was traveling. He met a very beautiful girl. She was in a swimming suit. Okay, okay, that's a female dog. Okay, <laughs> okay. Gopi felt so, and Gopi is a handsome dog. She looked at Gopi. Gopi said, no, until my amma allows, I can't look at you. You know, and Gopi will uh, bark, you know, this way. Then I said, look, what Gopi looks at me and he, he thinks of me. Why can't I write a book on Gopi? The way Gopi looks at me. And that is the result of my book, Gopi's Diaries. And, the, and my husband is extremely scared of dogs. He said, no dog at home. No <laughs> dog at home. This was my son's dog and he went abroad. So Gopi stayed with me. Now he has my, he's my dog. So he said, no, I can't withstand a dog. You choose between me and a dog, you know, he will tell. I said, I will choose both of you. 
don't <laughs> worry or oh, don't worry he will not come and sleep with you okay i will see that i will sleep with gopi i will sleep on gopi's bed kind and ultimately in one year's time particularly in covid gopi became a kind of a chain to everybody at home murti will get up and ask did gopi eat breakfast did he go for a walk how is he why has not got up is he not well i said murti you never ask me those many that many questions to me okay <laughs> are you not well he said no because gopi cannot speak whereas you can speak and in one year time murti became so much attached to gopi and that is what i have written this book sudha murti the gopi diaries finding love oh, how mr murti changed himself with because of the covid time and touching gopi a touch of loved one can change your life oh so that is that's i want to tell all of you my sisters here in life everybody will have difficulties everybody will have problems there is nobody without a problem without difficulty for me your difficulties are simple for you my difficulties are simple everybody has difficulties everybody has problems but please remember this too shall pass this too shall pass when you are in difficulties share your difficulties if somebody is in difficulty give a hug be kind to them don't compare tell them don't worry this too shall pass and give them himmat confidence and tell them life is beautiful do not worry waste and go on talk thinking negative negative things will bring you down think positive love animals love nature life is eternally beautiful because nature and animals and human beings we have to live in coexistence with with happiness and that's what i want to tell think positive don't lose hope and don't be in the company of negative people okay and have animals and shower your love on that that gives you in response lot of positive energy dhanyawad and jai hind sudha ji thank you so much for sharing your your heart with us i think we all were deeply i've been watching everybody i can see people crying um but i think you are a special human being and we're amen, deeply amen. grateful deeply grateful that you shared your heart with us and i'm very ordinary stories. i want to tell you that i'm very ordinary ordinary person ordinary people extraordinary life yes <laughs> sudha ji nahi sir nahi so i want to tell all of you keep courage in life keep courage and understanding another human being is very difficult in life don't insist that somebody should listen to you are and don't compete with anybody compete with yourself how i was yesterday and how i am today am i a better person in so committing you know commenting on someone comment on yourself how i should improve how i should be a better person don't expect someone should listen to you because everyone has their own mind but you should do what you feel the best and i can't bring a temple i can't build a church i can't build a masjid my body itself is a temple masjid and a church and let me keep it clean that's all i tell thank you so much sudha ji we are so so grateful to you on behalf of all of us at new acropolis and the culture circle thank you for sharing your wisdom with us thank you bye. thank you for the thank wonderful talk bye thank you. Yes. thank you bye thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. bye